Hi guys! In the vegan baking world, meringue has been a challenge not easily conquered at home. But fairly recently, this has changed. Sparked by a picture of vegan pavlova by Goose Walt on a Facebook group, humorously named What Fat Vegans Eat, a spin-off group has been experimenting with a strange ingredient that is actually readily available, especially in vegan or vegetarian kitchens. Lucky us. I give you agua faba, or legume egg, or bean brine, or bean juice? Just choose the term that is most appealing to you. That's right, we're taking the water that came in your can of cooked chickpeas, great northern beans, or cannellinis, and whipping that up. You can also make your own aguafaba from dry, unsoaked beans to avoid the extra salt or preservatives that are present in some canned beans. Not all aguafaba is the same though. We want liquid that resembles egg whites. Liquidy, but it has a thick, slippery feeling between your fingers. So here I have a half cup of aguafaba from a can of chickpeas, and it goes into a clean, large mixing bowl. Then we start mixing. You'll want to use an electric mixer, either a handheld like I am, or a stand mixer. If you have a balloon whisk attachment, use that. After one minute on the highest setting, we're at the frothy stage. There are large bubbles, but it's still liquidy under there. At two minutes, I have a smooth foam, but no peaks. My hand mixer is a cheap $10 thing, so I make sure to turn it off every minute and give it a minute or two to cool off. After three minutes, we have soft peaks developing. This is where we can see some peaks forming if we pull out the whisks, but they melt down after a second. Let's keep going, moving those whisks around in the bowl and tilting so they can really work into the aguafaba. You can really see this developing just like egg whites. And like with egg whites, the time it takes to form the stiff peaks needed in meringue varies. This can take anywhere between 5 minutes to 20 minutes. After 6 minutes of whipping, we have fairly firm peaks. We can see the ripples from the whisks holding, but they will melt down after a little while. We are on the home stretch, almost there. The great thing about using aguafaba is that over whipping doesn't seem to be a problem. Regular egg whites can over whip, turn grainy, and basically all your whipping work will be ruined. But with aguafaba, it just gets super stiff to a certain point. I could be mistaken, but thanks to the efforts of numerous experimenters in the vegan meringue hits and misses group created by Rebecca August, I am fairly certain of this. And finally, we have stiff peaks. Oh yeah, look at that fluffy stuff. Stick into the whisk and it doesn't even come off when I flick it around. You want to be at this stage before adding anything else like sugar or flavorings. Now I'm adding some powdered sugar. This is three-fourths of a cup of regular white granulated sugar that I just put in my blender for a minute. Add it in gradually to the aguafaba fluff here. I'm adding a quarter cup, whisking it in, and you can see the fluff going backwards a little bit. It's down to the soft peak stage again, but that's okay. Just whip it back up a bit before adding more sugar. Now I know some will ask about the sugar, as maybe you've heard that white sugar isn't vegan. To others, this will alarm you. How can sugar be unvegan? Number one, don't panic. There is a very good chance that the white sugar that you use is accidentally vegan friendly, especially if it's from beets or if you live in Australia. The sugar I use is from Rogers, which happens to be the major brand of sugar in my area. The product number on the package is 22, which tells me it's from Tabor, Alberta, and is from a sugar factory that uses beets and is vegan friendly. If you get a bag of Rogers sugar and the number starts with 10, it's unfortunately cane sugar that's been filtered through bone char, which is a byproduct of the meat industry. To find out whether the sugar available near you is vegan friendly or not, just call or email the companies. You can choose organic, which is normally vegan friendly, but if you really want to be sure, just write to them. That also shows the companies that people care about this issue. Okay, all the sugar is in and now you can add some flavorings. I'm adding one teaspoon of vanilla extract. You might want to be careful here. Not too much or the meringue will not be as stiff or it might collapse altogether. And there is our sweet vanilla scented meringue. You can use this on lemon meringue pie, on top of ice cream or pastries, or as a whipped topping on hot drinks. It tastes a lot like marshmallows, actually. Or pipe them into rounds and bake at a low temperature for a couple of hours and let them cool to make crispy meringue cookies or decorations for cakes. The possibilities are endless. 